everyone. Today we are going to discuss vector addition and vector subtraction, an important topic as far as the topic of vector is concerned. Papers uh, involve questions in which vector addition and subtraction plays a pivotal role. You can subscribe the channel. I have been uploading lessons on O-level crash course on regular basis. I have also uploaded some lessons on the solution of the past papers and I will keep on doing that so you can uh, take benefit from it. You can subscribe the channel if you haven't done so. You can also uh, you can also comment and you can also tell me the topic in which you want some uh, guidance or discussion. So today we are going to study vector geometry and uh, in that we are going to discuss vector addition and vector subtraction. Now that is necessary uh, to understand the problems in vector geometry. Now what is vector addition? In in my last lesson I have discussed about uh, the addition of vectors as well as subtraction of vectors in uh, column vector form. Today we are going to discuss uh, vector addition laws as well as subtraction laws. Suppose we have two vectors A and B and in triangular law we may also call it triangular law as well as it, it may be called head to tail rule. If you have these two vectors A suppose and you have a vector B this one and we have to add them by triangular law of vector addition you just need to draw vector A and where the vector A ends. Now this is tail of vector A, this is tail and this is head, the arrow. This is tail of vector B and this one is the head of vector B. Now according to triangular law, where the vector A ends, vector B starts from this point. So, vector B starts at the ending point of vector A. So, one vector starts from the ending point of the other vector. At the end point of vector A, you are going to start vector B. Direction will be same whatever they have given you the direction. Direction of A is this one and direction of B is this one. So, you just need to put B at the ending point of vector A. Now, after joining them, now this is also known as head to tail rule. You just need to you just need to join the tail of A with the head of B. That means tail of first vector with the head of last vector. Now this will give you the resultant vector that is A plus B. Now this is triangular law of vector addition that is also uh, we may also name it as head to tail rule. In parallelogram law of vector addition, our vectors A and B they have a common starting point. Now, when your vectors have a common starting point, you need to observe this one. In triangular law, we do not have a common starting point. The starting point of A is different, starting point of B is different. We join them, we join them by putting the starting point of B with the ending point of A, we join them in this way. But in parallelogram law of vector addition, both the vectors A and B, they are starting from the same point. So they have a common starting point. In this case, you are going to draw a vector parallel to B like this one and draw a vector parallel to A, this one, parallel to A and a vector parallel to B. Now we may call it B and this will be A. Now join, now draw a diagonal, a diagonal, diagonal of this parallel, this forms a parallelogram, this forms a parallelogram. Now that this diagonal of parallelogram will give you resultant vector and this will be equal to A plus B as drawn in this diagram. So this is parallelogram law of vector addition. When your vectors are starting from a common point, you can uh, use parallelogram law of vector addition. And when your vectors have a different starting point, then head to tail rule will help you to 
uh, solve or to uh, to complete the vector addition. Now in column, now in 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 vector notation when you have been uh, provided with vectors like uh, p q and q r suppose we have two vectors p q and q r. Okay, we do not have a uh, column vector right over here. I have explained the addition of column vectors and subtraction in my previous lesson. Now, if we have a vector p q and uh, another vector q r, now if you have to add them p q the displacement of uh, uh, point from p to q and q r shows the displacement from q to r. Now, when you are going to add them, now for that there is a condition that this point must be same if you have to add them. Now, this point q that is same and you are performing addition. So, you are going to skip this point this, this alphabet q and your result will be pr, pr. p is the start, r is the end. So, in vector addition pr mean start and end that is different you know, in case of subtraction this is different we have to follow a different rule over there just keep in mind then when you are going to add two vectors so this alphabet must be same point for vector addition suppose we have an example if a b if you are going to add a b plus b c plus c d let's suppose now in first two in first two b is common and for vector addition this this uh, this should be common so result of a b plus b c will be a c plus c d now first of all add the first two and the condition is appropriate we have a same point over here so we can perform vector addition now we can also add these two because this c is common it is same in both these vectors. So, your result will be A D, A is the start point and D is the end point. So, start and is the result over here. So, this is how you are going to perform your vector addition when the vector are represented in this form. So, P Q plus Q R will give you P R and P R is the resultant vector as, as drawn over here P R and we have followed uh, triangular law of vector addition over here the end point of A and this is the start point of B. So, we have different starting points for both the vectors and where the first vector is ending the second vector is starting from there this is head to tail rule. Now, we have to we have to observe this point as well. Now, in this case for vector addition R is common R is same but the result is a zero vector. The reason is that the reason is that if I am going to rearrange it in this way p r and p r the sign here will be negative. What I have done over here it was r p I have written it as p r. So, I have changed the direction of this vector. So, by changing the direction so, plus sign will be converted into a negative 1 and same vectors, but with opposite signs or with opposite direction will be cancelled. So, your answer will be a 0 vector. So, you have to keep this in mind this point is same, but the ending this one and this one the start of this one and the end of this one is also same. So, in this case your result will be 0 vector. The problems involving a 0 vector suppose we have two column vectors minus 4 3 plus 4 minus 3. Now, they are negative of each other negative of a vector mean a vector having the same components, but signs will be different here you have got minus 4 here you have got plus 4. So, uh, magnitude is same, but signs are different that means their direction is opposite if one is in this direction the other one is in this direction. Similar is the case with the y component plus 3 and minus 3. So, addition will give you 0 0 column vector. Now, this is a column vector form of 0 vector. This is column vector form of 
a zero vector. Similarly, in, in another notation, if you are going to add a with minus a, you know, that means the vectors are same, but their directions are different, magnitude is same. So, the result is again a zero vector. Now, vector subtraction, now they, we are going to discuss two types of problems. One is that you are provided with a grid and we have been given these two vectors a and b. Now, direction of a is indicated by this arrow while direction of b is indicated by this arrow. If you are going to subtract them, you can take negative of b. How you can take negative of b? You simply need to reverse the direction of b. b is in this direction, you can reverse its direction. So, you can draw b. I am just explaining it over here like this. Now, this is negative of b. Magnitude is same, but direction is opposite. Now, when you have obtained negative of b, you just need to use triangular law of vector addition mean the point where a is ending, this a is used over here. The end point of a will be the start point of b, negative of b because I am doing vector subtraction. So, this one is negative of b, this one and we are joining the end point of a with start point of negative of b. So, if you are going to add them, so this will be a plus minus b, a plus this one is minus b. So, the result will give you a minus b. Now, in the, no, there is another law in vector subtraction, if you are going to perform vector subtraction, the triangular law of vector subtraction is one of the way to do that. Now, for this case, the starting point, the starting point of the vectors a and b, they are same. The starting point is same for both the vectors a and b. Now, if you want to find this resultant vector that is indicated by a b, a to b, a b. Now, a b will be equal to the end minus start. Now, the end of this is b and the start is a. This is start, this is end for this case. This is the resultant vector. Now, the, it is ending at b starting from a. So, when you have to perform vector subtraction and your vectors are having a common starting point and you need to find a b that mean end minus start end is b. This is end and a is start. So, end minus start mean o b minus o a. O b is b and o a is a. So, b minus a will be the answer, but the answer will be changed if you are going to find this resultant. Now, this one is ending at a. Now, it is ending at a and it is starting from b and this is b to a, b a. Now, the end point is a and start point is b. So, end minus start, end minus start o a minus o b, o a is in represented by a while o b is represented by b. So, this will be the answer. So, you have to keep in mind that a b and b a they are not equal in vector subtraction. Now, one or a couple of more things for triangular law of vector subtraction both vectors a and b must start from the same point that is true they both are starting from the same point. Now, take some examples here. Now, the, the vector p and q they have a common starting point this one. q is going towards this side, p is going towards this side. If you want to find this resultant, now this one is ending at q. So, end minus start this is start point, this is end point. So, end minus start q minus p is the answer. Now, in this case, we are going to do vector addition because the direction of p is now the opposite of this one. 
so this is p this is q now don't take that this should be the negative of p this is a separate case this is a separate case so this is p and this is q the this is the end point of p while this is start point of q the point is the starting point is not same in this case starting point is not same the end point of p is the start point of q so we are going to perform vector addition that is p plus q while in this case again this one is used over here this is p this is q but the direction of resultant is now changed the direction of resultant was upside in this case while it is downward here so your answer will be minus p minus q because this is p plus q so when you will change the direction of the resultant it will be minus p minus q so this is second part of uh, lesson on vectors we are going to perform we are going to in fact solve some uh, questions related to past papers in the next lesson so keep watching and subscribe the channel if you haven't done it so